So there are ways to facilitate this. And we can do this cost effectively. We work directly with economic development organizations around the world in helping them stimulate their economies through the most promising and economically uh, challenged group, which is small business. And every country wants to have an innovation economy. We want them to have an innovation economy as well. And we provide the services necessary for them to get there, get organized, get on board, join the global community, and be part of what we're all creating here. So reach out to us. We'd love to speak to you about that. Um, ICANN NY is also a partner in an organization called iClean which is changing the way we commercialize technologies here in New York State. iClean is uh, in part sponsored by a group called NYSERDA, which is New York State Energy Development Research Authority. And this is designed to help New York State companies commercialize clean tech and energy renewable products here in New York State for the benefit of New York State. But once these are commercialized, we go global with them. So we're very proud. We have about 26 companies right now that we're working with in iClean with our partner, the uh, University at Albany Nanotech Center, which is probably the premier facility in the world right now for this endeavor. Uh, any interest from New York companies, we'd love to speak to you and see how we can help you as well. Uh, there is a seminar coming up on December 4th with our regional partner, Marist College. Uh, Susan is here this morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're very excited about this symposium. Intellectual property is probably one of the stickiest topics there is right now for small, medium-sized companies. Uh, just as an example, we got a proposal this week from a group and they're looking to develop some new products and services. They're not in the United States. And I asked them about their intellectual property. They showed me some pictures of consoles and widgets and things that they are going to be introducing. And I said to them, one of the issues we have is have you protected all the widgets, the software, and everything to do what you want to do? And he said, well, we don't know how to do that. And I said, well, number two question is, have you trampled on anybody else's intellectual property while you were dreaming up what you wanted to do? How do we check that? Um, so in light of the lawsuits that took place over the summer months this year between Apple and Samsung in the software industry, how does this all converge and how do we deal with it on a, on a multi-level basis to know if we innovate, if we create, that we're not infringing on somebody else's intellectual property? And if so, how do we deal with that? Or are we creating something that has true value? And how do we protect it? And how do we monetize it? And then ultimately, how do we protect it? Our team of panelists are going to approach all these issues from licensing, through IP development, through processes that are available here in the United States for work for, for IP development, all through our, one, of, one of our presenters is going to be an intellectual property attorney who's anti-IP. Do you need it? When do you need it? under what circumstances, and how much should you risk. So it's a well-rounded group. Uh, we have an academic on board who's going to give you his perspective on software development. So we invite you to participate. Uh, this will not be webcast. It's going to be by in-person only, held at Marist College, uh, up here in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, go on to the site, take a look. We'd love to have you. Uh, it's very reasonable, and I think it'll be a great day. So we invite you to check that out. Uh, another endeavor that we are involved in is 
the Wall Street Green Summit, which is being held March 18th down in Lower Manhattan. Uh, Peter Pissarro runs this and has for many years. It's a wonderful, wonderful conference. If you have any interest in clean tech, whether it be from the development stage, whether it be from the investment perspective, uh, smart grids, green buildings, new products, carbon trading, the whole list, uh, I think this is a very, very, very worthwhile endeavor. Uh, this summit, to me, kind of kicks off the entire spring season. It's my initiation into spring. I look forward to it every year. There are people, investors from all over the world converging on Wall Street for this conference. Uh, if there were one event that you would look to each spring, each year to attend, if you're involved in clean tech, I think this would, this would be the event for you. Uh, reach out to Peter, tell him where you heard it. Um, we'll be involved in that, in that conference as well. They'll have more information on that later on. But uh, it's a very, very, very worthwhile event, and we suggest you take a look at it. Well, now I've gone through the entire thing that I needed to do. Um, yesterday, we had an election here in the United States. And yeah, we did. Uh, for some people, they're walking around with smiles from here to here, and for other people, the frowns are, 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 are very evident. I want to touch on one aspect of, of our election process uh, without getting political. I learned yesterday that the total amount of dollars spent on the presidential election was over six billion dollars with a B. To me, that's obscene. Um, I could think of a thousand ways to spend six billion dollars, whether it be on research, whether it be on aid to small business, whether it be on aid to people who are displaced housing from superstorms, there are any number of ways to spend six billion dollars. I think the process, at the end of the day, netted what? We have a president that's been re-elected. We have a Congress and Senate that remains virtually the same. So at the end of the day, we spend six billion dollars to stay exactly where we were before. I'm not sure I understand the benefit. And I would love to see this process evaluated. And at the end of the day, we wish the president well in his second term. We want things to happen. We all look forward for collaboration. We want to grow our economy. We want to help the world grow its economy. We are the major player in the world when it comes to economic development and innovation and commercialization. We want to be the leaders. We need to be the leaders. We need to show the world how it's done. Spending that amount of money on an election that got us exactly where we were, in my opinion, isn't exactly the answer. Second topic. Last week here in New York, we had a superstorm named Sandy. Um, it, was, it, was, it was tragic. It really was. Uh, there are friends of mine who are, live in coastal communities in Long Island and, and in New Jersey who were literally wiped out. One friend who has a beach home stood and watched as his beach home got carried out into sea. Um, it's, it was, it was a, a terrible disaster. Now, is this a one-time thing? Is this an anomaly? Personally, I don't think so. I know what's happening at the polar ice caps. I know what's happening with global climate change. We're beginning to understand it. Are we able to cope with it and change it? Well, I think this storm is evident that things need to change. moment. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to finish that later, but the one thing I did want to mention is there is a good thing to this storm. It's going to create a lot of opportunity for innovation, whether it be inflatable corks that seal up the, the Lincoln Tunnel, or whether it's new weather barriers in lower Manhattan, or whether it's new ways to generate microgrids. This is going to be the place for innovation. This is where we want this to happen. And again, I think there's always a silver lining someplace we can make this happen. So I'm going to jump to Karen. Karen, are you there? Is Karen online? Is she there? Karen, good morning. Nothing. They're bringing her up now. Okay. She's not that big of a woman. But, uh. Hello? Good morning, Karen. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. What about you? Good. How is, uh, how's everything in Bratislava? Everything's fine. Good. Um, did you want to run through your presentation or would you like me to do that? How would you like to handle this? I know time is short. Yeah, um, I have a bit of a problem because I have other commitments um, in 10 minutes. Okay, go for 10 so, minutes. Uh, Why don't you I'm go afraid uh, it's a bit short right now. Good. Why don't you go for 10 minutes and I'll put your slides up here and then I'll finish what you don't, don't get around to. Okay. Okay, go. Um, well, let me briefly, very briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Karen. Um, I am originally from Germany, living with my Peruvian boyfriend in Slovakia, studying in the <laughs> US and working in Spain. Um, this is how I came about to, uh, to study intercultural business communication, intercultural project management and other things intercultural. And uh, yeah, I would like to give you a brief overview of what intercultural management means for entrepreneurs. Um, can, there's, can you put up the slides? They're up. They're up. They're up. Okay. Yeah. What is culture? Um, because I, I can't see anything on your screen. No. Okay. Um, what is culture? There is a lot of, of um, misunderstandings that culture is about nationality, about race, about ethnicity, but culture includes a lot more. It includes, for example, which education you have, which interest you have, it includes demographic factors, not so much if you're 31 or 42 years old, but if you're a digital native or a digital immigrant, for example, and there is there are numerous um, aspects that play into culture. And uh, if we go to the next slide, myths and mistakes. Yeah, I can see the slides now. <laughs> um, some common myth, myths that exist about culture is that people from my country have the same culture, and people from other countries have a different culture. I can tell you one thing. Um, I grew up, grew up in more or less rural, rural Germany in a small town. Um, I spent all my childhood and my adolescence with our neighbor's daughter. We went to school together, we played together, we did everything together. I have now much more in common with a random software developer from Pakistan than with this girl. So um, it's just the way you take, because um, my interests are different, my, my background is different, my education is different, so it's, it's not much about um, being from the same country, having the same culture. And I'm sure that all of you will agree that somebody from New York is different than somebody from Idaho, for example, or somebody from Arizona or Texas, although they're from the same country. Um, yeah, we've already said culture is not only about nationality or race. Um, the old um, learning do's and taboos of a country has proven to not, by far, not be sufficient to do business with other cultures. And uh, you should also not 
just adapt to other cultures. Um, can you forward one more? Yeah. The single biggest mistake that you can possibly make in intercultural encounters is to perceive a different culture as deficient. They're simply different, that's it. They're not, not better, not worse than anybody else. They're just different. Okay, um, if we go to the next slide. It's up. What, why is it, what, what's it got to do with me as an entrepreneur? Why should I worry about intercultural competence? So, um, can you forward one? Thanks. Um, we have all the modern information technology, we have infrastructure, we have internet, and even the one-man entrepreneurial business can use sales opportunities on a global scale now. We can find new customers, you can build up networks with other entrepreneurs, with other companies, with other people that have complementary skills that you have. And you can find new sales channels, obviously. You can very easily build up an internet shop. You contract with PayPal and you can accept credit card payments from all over the world. So it's all open to you there, for, for even for a very small one-man company. And uh, I think we've gone a bit far in those slides. Yeah. Um, can you go back a bit? Back, 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 back. I think we need to go on the previous slide. I can't see this properly. The one that's heading, it's headed, why is intercultural competence important for entrepreneurs? Maybe it's the next slide. No, there is one in between. Nope. Maybe it's not... Lost in translation. It's hidden in your... <laughs> okay. <laughs> we adapt. Yeah, we say... Yeah. Um, you can access totally different resources. You can find suppliers worldwide. You can find new materials, new ideas, new info. And you can also find employees, business partners on a worldwide basis. But obviously you will also find new competitors if you're on the global market. And those competitors will be for the market itself, for the resources and for employees and for everything you're out there. So you'd better be prepared. So now we come to the slide that Les has put up now. What is intercultural competence? What do I have to know as an entrepreneur? Um, we're, we're one back, Les. One slide. Backwards? Backwards. backwards. <clears throat> this one now. Uh, intercultural competence is not a competence in itself. It is more a combination or an application of strategic competence, professional competence, social competence, and individual competence in international surroundings. So, for example, strategic com competence, you have public relations and marketing. If you take the intercultural component, of course, if you do marketing for, for a different country, country, let's say for some country in South America, of course you have to adapt your marketing, not only in that you do it in Spanish or Portuguese, but also the, the content of the marketing should be different. For example, if you market something for family, you put a photo of a family. A family in the US usually consists of father, mother, and two children, more or less. A family in South America consists of anything up to 27 people, because they even consider their 30 degree cousin, close family. So um, you see that there is a, you have to consider culture. Um, if you take in the area of profession, professional con competence, for example, you have negotiation skills there. Um, negotiation is much different in, dif in, 
in other cultures, for example. In China, you have different decision makers. You need to talk to different um, people. You need to um, form relationships before you even start negotiating. Um, if we look at social competence, one example I take out, conflict resolution. Even the definition of what is a conflict is different in, in cultures. Some that, something that might upset you totally might be very normal in, in another culture. Also, who, whom do you talk to about the conflict? How do you go about to, to resolve it? Can you address it directly or indirectly? Everything depends on culture. And uh, individual competence, language is, is obvious, but other things like tolerance of uncertainty. We're in the Anglo-American cultural context. We're very much black and white. Things are either right or wrong. Into Asia, they have, for example, this context of yin and yang, which are opposites, but they, they are always parts of each other, and only the opposites combined make a whole. So um, they have a totally different, different um, tolerance level of uncertainty than we have. And if, if you manage to, as entrepreneurs, to to transfer all these business competency, the hard skills and the soft skills, into an intercultural context, then you will be successful internationally. And uh, yeah, the last slide I want to show you is the how can an entrepreneur acquire this intercultural competence. Um, we nowadays go away from doing these trainings for do's and don'ts because they maybe cover 3% of the whole picture and they're very stereotyping. And um, this is actually not what we do anymore. The best results um, have been achieved with a mix of off-the-job training and on-the-job coaching. And uh, the training should normally include some general cultural sensitivity that you get an understanding of your own culture and how other cultures can be different. That um, And then some influence of, of culture on on your, on the entrepreneur's specific business and intercultural interaction models in general. How do you interact? It's about negotiation, about problem solving, about conflict resolution, about communication and so on. And uh, you normally use a mix of methods for this training. Um, the coaching part should be on the job. That can be an individual coaching of the entrepreneur or the entire team, if you're more than one in your company. And uh, usually this is done as a blended learning nowadays, so you have a lot of online sessions and not so, many, not so much um, um, sessions in a, in a certain set, setting. And uh, very important factor is intercultural problem solving because you will always run into problems and the coach can can help you get get out of those and, and solve them and uh, create a, a very good cooperation with with your international business partners and uh, yeah last not least I would like to to end with a quote intercultural mindset. The mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much for your... And sorry, we had to run through this so fast. Karen, with your permission, I'm going to give out your uh, email address where they can reach you with any questions. Um, yes, I've already sent a, a PDF of this presentation. Yeah. Um, any would like is can can get it and uh, I put my address in there so if there is any questions or if, if yeah we if can we any... can make it available to anybody who's interested we'd be we'd be yeah. happy to do that 
please um, shoot away with any questions. Send them per email or contact me on the usual social networks. So you'll find me everywhere. Right. Karen, thank you so much. I know you got to run. Okay. Thanks for having me. I wish you all a great day. Thank you, Karen. We'll speak thank soon. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I managed to screw this one up, huh? Yes. I mean, I'm going to pull it up right now. Yeah, da, da. Give me one second here. So there's Karen's contact information. Um, Karen is, is expert in supply chain management as well as intercultural competencies. Uh, she's very eclectic. She's, she's, she's world renowned in, in, in what she does. And I just want to point out one thing. Um, Karen and Al, who you'll hear in a moment, are, are representative of the kinds of professionals that we provide to entrepreneurs, innovators, and emerging companies. So what you hear this morning is just a small sampling of, of the professionals and the people that are involved in our organization. We're very proud to have them on board. Um, I'd also, I'd like to bring up Al Garlic and let him prepare and get ready for his presentation. Um, Al and I met a number of years ago we are neighbors down in Rockland County of New York. Good morning, sir. And Al and I share some similar backgrounds as we come from more or less traditional print, traditional media, uh, going back more, the, more years than either of us would like to admit. But uh, we have also moved forward we've been able to adopt to new technologies and embrace new technologies and integrate them into what we do. Uh, so we, we do share that. Al is very involved as a mentor and as a participant in ICANN NY. And it'll be uh, multi-levels, which we'll get into another time. But I just, while he's preparing, I just wanted to touch just real briefly on the innovation aspects of this superstorm that we, we had last week, which for any of you who care, we're getting a snowstorm tonight, which is really helping a lot. Um, we, I made some, some contacts earlier in the week and we had some wonderful conference calls earlier in the, earlier in, in, in the week and the discussion was centered around innovations that will come out of conflicts, disasters, etc., etc., etc. Whether it be, as we mentioned, microgrid technologies to get companies, get people off the grid, whether it's a combination of technologies, whether it's new technologies, is going to be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, not just for job growth, for economic growth, but for the development of innovation. And that's what this whole thing is all about. It's innovation, and it's opening up new doors. And I think there'll be some tremendous ideas that'll come out of it. There's already been a conference that's been uh, arranged for next week in, in Manhattan to discuss just that. It wasn't planned, it's evolved. It's very quick, it's happening, and it's all around us. So we invite you to participate. Al, if you push the lower button, you will be able to advance your own slides, and I won't have to do this. Cool. Okay, so I hand the magic wand over to you, and I introduce Al Garlic, who's going to give his presentation on SEO, traditional marketing, and how we all stay out of big trouble. <laughs> um, you know, he's talking about the storm and innovation. Uh, I'm down in Rockland, and we got whacked pretty good. Matter of fact, I had the pleasure of a tree coming down in my place. Uh, and the building department putting a sign out saying I couldn't get in. <clears throat> well, needless to say, Sunday I snuck in, got my computer. It was missed by a limb by about two and a half feet. 
the computer, uh, the printer and scanner weren't so lucky. So when I was preparing this um, at my sister's, the utility was outside and they were surging. My computer went out and it went through this huge diagnosis, diagnostics. Uh, it allowed me back in about 12, 15, about the time they announced who won the presidential election. And uh, the choice was this. Earlier in the week, I said, am I going to call Wes and, and bail on this, or am I just going to do it? And I said, you know, this is what you do. You do it. So it won't be perfect. I didn't get to proofread it. There are, I caught a couple things, but I'd already sent him an email. So we'll just go through this. This is what we do in a time like when Sandy comes to visit. We innovate and we get on with it. Uh, I'm going to review the multitude of changes that directly affect marketing today. Now, John, you're a marketing guy. You're an expert in branding. Any one of these subjects could be a book. So it's going to be a very skim to get you thinking, hey, here's some areas that I need to think about, maybe some things I need to do differently in my business, investigate. And that's the purpose today. We're going to look at an overview of the massive changes over the last five to 10 years in websites, in SEO, integration of traditional and new media, PPC. Social media, we're not going to really cover because if you notice the last two months, we spent one session on LinkedIn and another one primarily on Facebook plus other social media. So there'll be just one or two. That's about as long as I'm going to speak about it. And guerrilla marketing. I happen to be a master trainer in guerrilla marketing. Um, What's changed in websites? Everything. What, what worked five years ago doesn't work today. People notice, well, I used to rank, and now nobody can find me. What's the purpose? Well, the website should now be the top of your sales funnel, whether you sell online or not. It should be that piece that gets the people very deep into that sales conversation, how you can help them, what you do better, how you deliver value. <clears throat> It is your brochure, it is your catalog, uh, and it does continue the conversation when done properly. OK, what's changed? Just a few years ago, a flash site that was beautiful. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you some research I did for a company that had a total flash site. Everything was pictures. There was no copy in it. They were a furniture company in New York City, and they wondered why nobody could find them. There was no content. They were doing things that worked eight years ago that weren't working. Um, when I first started, uh, Les had mentioned I was a traditional print guy. I got into my own business uh, by repping Thomas Register. Anybody remember Thomas Register? Yeah, it was the encyclopedia of US business. And we had catalogs. We had 33 volumes. Then the internet came. We had one-page websites that worked, one screen. One screen websites, they worked. Um, you could use a program and go out and say, oh, I'm going to put you on 148,000 search engines. I forget the number, but I did And then they knocked that out. That wasn't working. I already talked about Flash. Things have changed, and content is king. Remember that. Content is king. Now, is the content my content, or is it the user's content? If I'm not relevant to the user and what they're searching on, they're gone anyway. So remember that. Each page today has to have SEO research before developing the copy. Now, if my scanner worked, I would show you this really cool thing. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. What we do, and I wonder if you can scan in on that, but you see the yellow on the top here? These are terms that we've determined are over the top. We might do SEO work for you for two, three, four years, and you might only get up to page four. Think of personal injury lawyer. How competitive would that term be? Even personal injury lawyer Manhattan or NYC. You're just not going to do it because they spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars building their links, and they're so far ahead that the amount of time and money to do that is very low probability. Then we rank things for advanced. They're competitive, but we can do some work there. And the greens will be basic. They're easier places to compete. Now, this is proprietary. But if you do a Google search, 
and used the Google keyword term. How many people are familiar with that? Okay. You'll go in there and you'll see global searches. You'll see local searches. You know how, how many people know what a local search is? They've actually now modified and described what it is. People said local, that must be local to the Hudson Valley, to Kingston. It's local to the country, to the US. So you also see in there some information about how competitive the term is, but that is relative to AdWords and PPC, not social media. However, it is a free tool. That's the URL, and you certainly can use it to start. You just saw the proprietary thing. And what we do is we look at this and we say, where can we compete? How can we compete? And how can we do it cost effectively? I'd love to have your money, but I don't want your money for three years. And then you say to me, but Al, I'm a personal injury in attorney in Manhattan, and I'm still on the fifth page, and I've paid you a ton of money. Because we weren't going to get there. It's our team versus their team. And if they've got good teams, they've got smart people, they're going to do the right thing. And if they've, they've got a five-year head start on you, you might as well accept that. Copy. I talked about content. Each page is SEO optimized. If I do the research and I choose the right terms, my ranking comes up. And I do the work, the linking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, copy, well-written, compelling value story, relevant to the keywords. And John, I'm sure you agree. It'll never, ever go out of fashion. The well-told value story is the key to all marketing. What does it do? It converts clicks into prospects. You ever go to a website and it's totally irrelevant to what you're look, looking for? How long did you stay? 30 seconds, click, goodbye, they can't help me. That's how quick we're making decisions. So I've got relevant copy that's easy to read that brings them down that funnel slowly I get people who say, hey, I do need what they have. Looks like they pr provide value. I want to talk to them. So they're going to raise their hand, and they're either going to call you, email you, or you should have a form on there and make it easy for them to, to go through and, and contact you. I talked about relevancy in the keywords. And again, uh, anybody remember McCann Erickson? I forget who they are now. McCann Erickson, blah, 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 blah. First time I ever walked into their, uh, got off the elevator on their floor, in architectural letters, much wider than this screen, all it said is, the truth well told. That was almost 30 years ago, and I have yet to come up with a better definition of quality advertising. They really hit it on the nail. The truth well told, the value story. We're going to skim because we don't have that much time. Logs and articles. OK, first of all, when we're writing them, remember what page we're going to link to them and have the right SEO optimization even within the blog or the article. Again, relevancy, relevancy, relevancy. Content is king. Establish yourself as an expert. Write it from the user's perspective. Don't sell. Help. Help them figure out how to solve their problem. And they will ask you how to solve the problem. The old school of, hey, mister, you want to buy a book? doesn't work. You don't want to be over salesy. You do want to kick, include anchor or link text, text back to your site. You want to post them in a, your own section. You want to link to the other page that you're trying to optimize, trying to drive them to. <clears throat> you do want to post to social media, which we covered two weeks talking about. You do want to post them to forums and sites such as easingarticle.com. Later on, I'm going to, if you want, you can sign up and I'll email you all sorts of good freebies where you can go post your stuff. Come on. Pretty please. Video. Video is coming on very strong. And uh, I'll be a little cynical because Google takes your video and turns it into an article, but it gives you a little higher ranking if you have a video than an article. And why would that be if they just turn your video into an article? Maybe because they spent a billion dollars to buy YouTube? I don't know. But if it turns it into an article and they're the same, why does this one get a little heavier weight? But video is watching TV. Kids today like it easy. And kids are getting to be almost to retirement age. 
people who grew up in the TV era. They like it easy, it is entertaining, it is very compelling if you do it right, and it's hard to turn off. So if you do it right, you have it SEO scripted, you have your own channel on YouTube, you're linking it, you're building links back, you have it interesting and compelling, have the right words, but again, the right value story. We post it to video sites as YouTube, Google. You make your titles, uh, very interesting point here. Make sure your title is SEO optimized yet compelling, because if I'm going down searching for something, you ever look for video and there's so much there. The problem with the internet is there's an avalanche of information, so we have to stick out. We have to make our titles not only optimized, but interesting. And our descriptions telling why it's an investment of their time to watch that rather than a waste of their time. RSS feeds, press releases today. If you're doing them online, you can actually embed videos Costs a little more money, but you can still you can embed a video right in a, into a press release today. Search engine op optimization. This is going to be a real quick skim. The upside, and here's one of my typos, if I recall. Your investment of time and money, if done correctly, will cause your investment to have legs. You're going to have a long time that you're up there. You spend the time and money to ramp up and get to that first page, but once you've done that work, and you've, it's easier to continue to do that work, to keep yourself ranking high. The downside, it's gonna take three to nine months to do this. And if you choose the improper words, as I showed you some of those over the top words, I'm a personal injury lawyer and I wanna just optimize that across the country, good luck. Okay, I'm gonna be, after five years and hundreds of thousands of dollars, I might still be on the fifth or sixth page, which is not gonna make me money. And certainly not gonna give me a return on the kind of money it's gonna to take to get there. So I gotta find the right terms and the right return on investment. <clears throat> On-page SEO. By the way, this has already changed. On-page is now worth about 25% of your ranking. So more of the off-page, the social, uh, we'll get into it later, but you still need to do it. And it's free for the small person. So it's a guerrilla marketing tactic as well as a very cutting edge one. Um, Think about this. This was a company that sells actually a very green product. Everything's recyclable, a plant product. But if, oh, this one happens to be the furniture store. Excuse me, the other one was the plant. But if I'm looking in here and I say, NYC furniture store, what would go with that? Modern furniture, New York? Furniture stores, New York. They're a clump of terms, and it's easy to write about those terms and make coherence. If I said, Ottoman over here, and design service over here, and I have just things all out on a tangent, the page doesn't make sense. It's hard, it's much more difficult to have a coherent value story come through there and optimize to the words. So you want to choose words that go together, that make sense in the same content. Title tags uh, are still extremely important. They need to be optimized. And then the descriptions need to help your readers understand why they should click. Duplicate content. I was working with a friend who was a chiropractor out in Detroit. He had bought this site that somebody had a great idea back when, and they basically wrote the same content, put about seven, eight, ten designs up, and chiropractors all over the country could buy it, and it'd be about seven hundred to a thousand dollars a year, and they get a twenty-page site and some cool animations. The problem is, is every single one of those people had exactly the same content. Google said. <laughs> He says, how come nobody can find me? That's the reason, it was all duplicated. <clears throat> Today, we don't wanna overuse our words two, three times of the exact phrase on the page. Relevancy to that keyword is critical. Quality content that is relevant to the keywords. Okay, we already said that overuse of the words will hurt you. Um, <clears throat> SEO URLs, let's say I'm uh, this furniture company and I'm Scandinavian Furniture. So I have scandinavianfurniture.com, but if I could get modernfurniturenewyorkcity.com, that would help them also. That's an example of an SEO optimized URL. Alt text, I'm just gonna go through this because we could spend a lot of time on all these. Your site map, an SEO scripted video, links from your social media, Internal links inside the page, you see the words that are 
highlighted, usually blue, and it'll send you a, a relevant content on another page. They look for that. Off page. I'm just going to give you a few. We don't have time to get into this. This could be a book, too. There's hundreds of factors, but here's a few. Link building, reciprocal links, SEO articles that are building the backlinks, press releases, backlinks, social bookmarking. Uh, there's a content and that form. I'll, I'll be glad to send a few more around to people who want to do some of this themselves because, it, again, it is a grill marketing technique. You trade your time, your talent, for a huge marketing budget. And some of these things you can do, some of it yourself. It's getting more difficult, but you can do some of it. Uh, continuing with off-page SEO, directory submissions. Okay, uh, you used to be able to like the URLs to the, to the quote websites, and a lot of them were just portals, but you would, you would put that out there. There's software now that you could send out to 100 and something directories at a time. The rules just changed a few months back. They want a human doing this. So it's certainly to your benefit to automate 100 and something, but then you have to go back and manually adjust. And uh, it's just the way they make the rules. Google is pretty powerful. He who's got the gold gets to make the golden rule. Um, here's a few places where you could do submissions. Again, we'll send you some more. Um, these free directory are, are places that, again, will help you with the listings. And we'll be glad to send those to you. At the end, we'll send a sign-up list, and I'll email some of the stuff. Local business optimization. Everybody, anybody see one of these heat maps where the eyes go before? With some of these studies. If you look, where's the eye? The eye is right on these local listings. Okay, local optimization is now part of SEO. It's here to stay, and it's not going away. And the cool part about this is that it really can help a small business. It can be a very much a guerrilla technique. If I am a, a restaurant in Kingston, and I'm trying to go up against Chili's, who has places all over the place, I can do my work locally, and there's a good chance I can beat them out here. And that's first page, and that's money in the pocket. That's a very valuable thing. <clears throat> Pretty please? If I'm nice to it, it behaves. OK, a couple tips. Get yourself listed on Google Local, Yahoo Local, Bing Local, number one. Get your directory listings in there. I'll send you a whole bunch of them. You can do hundreds of them. Social proof. Anybody go to um, Google Local, Yahoo Local, and see it? Basically, a testimonial for another business. I went to Joe's Fish House. It was the best thing on earth. Sam's carpet cleaning. They came in professional, blah, 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 blah. OK, this is social proof. It's more and more important. And the, I'm reading, as I speak, the stuff is changing. You know, marketing is uh, an ever-changing, evolving field. I think it's changing as quick as anything today. OK, what you can do is you can target local cities. I'm in Poughkeepsie. I've got a great pizzeria. Papa John's got the Super Bowl, but I got the goods. I got the social proof. I got the local work. I've done my local optimization. It's a good chance I can beat them out. Pay per click. Real quick, we're going to go through a lot of things real quick. Upside, you can get, in, you can get results in a week. Uh, you can also get action from some of those headings that are just not headings. I'm thinking uh, Thomas Register World. Uh, some of those key words that are so competitive that you're just not going to get to that first page. The downside is once you stop the program, you go through withdrawal. It ends. However, their game is if it's profitable, you won't, which that's how I'd advise you. Social media, this is all I'm going to say about it because we had two weeks about it. It's important SEO. It's a marketing vehicle that's here to stay. It's a tool that can be effective for firms that have keywords that are so competitive SEO that they're unlikely to produce. Some of the personal injury lawyers, some of the car dealers, small de car dealerships, that kind of stuff. You know, you got that big car dealership that wham bams everybody and they're on you like a shark and you have the little guy who exists because of his relationships. He can do stuff in social media where people realize that these guys take care of him and if I pay $200 more for the car, I get it back in spades in the end, that kind of thing. And if I have something in social media where people are spreading the word for me, again, another great guerrilla marketing tool 
in the digital world. Traditional media, real quick, real quick. People forget that traditional media is still the prime way to drive traffic to your website. We get so much information on the other side that people sometimes forget about traditional media. There's a lot of changes in traditional media that have, have really helped people to uh, <clears throat> market and integrate traditional media with, with their websites and new media. Direct mail. Um, what we can do there is use a squeeze page. And I'm going to show you a couple little examples here, and I'll pass these around. Um, first of all, this was targeted to less than 2,000 people. Yep. If you notice, a handwritten address, that looks like what? An invitation to a party, right? You open it up, and it says, summer's here. The garlics air conditioning is pleading for mercy. And we did a little graphic of this screaming, dying, tongue-in-cheek air conditioner. The neat thing in here is not only do we have personalized, everything is so automated, this is real warm. And then what we're using down here, just squeeze in here, this is the integration part. If you see this, this Al Garlic Private Folks.com, that is called the Pearl, private URL. When you go there, there's a squeeze page, and it's going to ask me a couple of questions. Wonderful tool for those people who are so sales resistant, they, they say, if I call this number, this guy's going to be selling me hard. So they come here and tell them what they need. So then when they call back, they talk about what he needs. He goes, yeah, that's what I need. Come on out and see me. It's a beautiful thing, and it integrates. And at the end of those questions, boom, we send them right to the website. <coughs> Public relations. John, this is your bailiwick. Um, the electronic press release, I can target it. I can send it out. I can really focus this, and I have all sorts of backlinks that come back to the website. So it's a really cool tool now, not only to get the word out to the media, target certain areas within the media, areas of interest, but also drive traffic to my website. Uh, we'll just do this one real quick, too, in the direct mail. This is just a total, cre being creative and totally different is it. If you get this, you don't even know what this is, right? It's a little green, funky-shaped thing. This happens to be for a car dealer. Highly automated, uh, uh, excuse me, price-driven on the back. But if you look at it, highly personalized is what I meant, not automated. Hand-driven. It's another, we don't, it's, it's just basically going to have the same sort of pearl on it. It's just another example of getting their attention and driving to a squeeze page and then to a website and integrating the old with the new. Magazine ads, press press. You know, if we're, we're looking for industrial trade press, they all still have new product, new literature. Go in there, let's see if it works. Track, track, track. Set up a squeeze page or a separate website, uh, an, <clears throat> a different number. Often those regional versions of a national magazine, you can go into some little podunk area, uh, no offense, a small rural area, uh, that's very inexpensive. And then you could put on your website, article seen in Newsweek, which is 100% true, and it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. They used to do reprints. Now you just put the thing on your website, and you send it out with your electronic press release. Hey, here's an article that was found in, in US News and World Report or whatever, and it makes you instantly credible. Uh, local magazines. There are local uh, magazines that will run an article for you if you buy a small ad. I know one in Rockland, it costs about four or $500, and they run a two-page ad. You can use that literature as seen in. However, it's also reaching a local audience. <clears throat> um, Offer-driven magazines like Quipper, you need to use a tracking number. You need to also uh, look at what they're doing online and be able to integrate it. Again, track, send it to a squeeze page, know what you're doing. Negotiate with all these guys. They're all, they all need to sell space, and they're all hurting. And I'm just going to go through these real quick, and we'll be done. Newspaper, we know readership's down. They all have online versions. Ask about programs, bundle, negotiate. They need you more than you need them. Remember that. Yellow pages and directories. Usage is down, but in some cases, in emergency services, it can still be effective. 
and again, bundle. And they're now, for the most part, saying we're going to set up a, a website, but I think it's going to be very quick, just like Thomas Register had to do, is they're going to just link to your website and take credit. Cable TV, again, tracking, a little hard. I'll give them some credit. Their main reason is to brand and make you aware of this, not so much drive sales leads. So I want to be fair to that, but you should, still should have a unique number in there, uh, a unique website, and track it. Cooperative direct mailers, envelope packs, super coops, RSVP. I don't know how many of you know, know of all of these type of things, but you've all seen a Val pack or super coops. RSVP does it with postcards, but it's a cooperative mail where they send a bunch of people's ads in one little packet. Track, they usually have online services too. So negotiate, bundle, bundle, bundle. Guerrilla marketing, and this is where we're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna just give you a couple of hints and then we'll send that. Did we send the uh, form around? Okay, guerrilla marketing is achieving traditional marketing goals in untraditional manners that utilize energy, creativity, innovation, and I've added technology to that. Um, instead of carpeting bomb, <clears throat> we're gonna run this huge campaign for $300,000 in the Hudson Valley on cable. It'll work if we do it. If you spend $10,000, it won't, but if you spend the 300, it will work. Um, so what can I do if I don't have that 300,000? I only got 10,000 and I put it in cable. It's like spitting into the wind. Um, warm market, everybody forgets about our warm market. Past sales, people who have had interest but don't buy. Here's a couple of things because I know we're time pressed. Free informational email series, give them information that helps them not sells my product. Uh, vary it with some of these cards. Odd holidays, this is a 4th of July card that produced seven referrals in the middle of the dead of summer for myself. And what I did is for every lead I gave $25 to the wounded warriors because I know 95% of that money goes directly to putting prostheses on people who lost legs, etc. Um, free articles, ebooks, hand them out, newsletters on and offline, and you can use that newspaper to do the, exactly that. Local SEO, it's a guerrilla technique. Running special coupons on your local web listings like Google Plus, social media. QR codes, print a coupon or a special and put it into your own billing. You're sending the mailing out anyway. What's it cost you to run a little quarter sheet of paper? You know, run it four times and cut it up. The pearl that I showed you about, it really significantly increases the pull of your direct mail, but it also pulls a lot of very sales resistant people that won't respond otherwise. Highly targeted, personalized, creative postcards. If you want to see some of them, I can show you afterwards. Uh, social media, I already talked about that. Uh, when you're in social media, get involved and give. Give answers. Uh, become an expert and the people start coming. Community bulletin boards, whether in diners, grocery, grocery stores, there's no reason why you can't promote your website there. Or ask, got a question about? You know, let's say you're an uh, infrared guy who does uh, energy offsets. You know, is your home wasting? You've got a question about this? Come here. Here's a form. We'll answer it for free. Uh, your business cards on the back, you should tell people what you do. QR codes, uh, they're very handy. Okay, conclusion. We know the changes in the market are massive and they're not going to stop. They're just going <laughs> to come, come at us faster and faster. So you need how to apply them and, and how you can take advantage of some of these, figure out where you want to target, what you want to do, and how I can beat my competition. Um, Obviously, this is extremely surface, and there could have been 15 books up there. So what I've done is I sent around a form. If you want some free marketing tips, I'll, I'll put you on our email for that. Uh, I'll be glad to email it, not only this, but uh, places to get, to post your articles, your videos, your social book marketing, and I'll send you a whole list of guerrilla marketing tools, as well as anybody who wants a free consultation. I'll be glad to do that. We'll do a 20 minute, no, we're not gonna do that? Free, free. Eh, 20 minute on the phone, we'll do it, be glad to do that. I'm breaking the rules. <laughs> I'm gonna get smacked for it, but you know, it won't be the last one. Um, there's a gazillion things out there. The nature of this was to give you just a, a primer. So if anybody's got any questions, 
Shoot. We have a, we have a microphone here. Uh, we encourage you to step up to the mic. Oh, now I've done it. Uh, thanks, Al. Um, you, know, you, you mentioned traditional, traditional media, me. and I'm, I'm interested in what changes are occurring with satellite radio and how that impacts radio advertising and reaching a customer. Is that you or me? I have no idea. Oh, it's you. Is it me? Uh, blame it on Les. Yeah. But um, I'm wondering, are there um, processes, processes? <laughs> Um, that you would use to uh, reach an audience via satellite radio? And, and what impact is satellite radio having on traditional radio in terms of advertising? Right. Hey, that, that's more your bailiwick, but I could say this. That's you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, what I would do, how is satellite? Satellite radio is very, very, very focused in on a certain demo. Uh, and, and if you look at... Let's make, here's a, a local guy did a, a postcard thing. We did birthdays, unbelievable burgers, you know, but they would be a competitor like a Chili's, which was three miles away from them. And we did birthdays and we pushed it. But think about, we did birthdays within a, a two mile radius of this. Um, or let's say we do, um, this one was targeted at a couple condo units that we knew their air conditioners were 10 years old plus and they're heaters, so it's a heating and air conditioning guy. Um, take that out and say, um, I'm trying to sell something to boomers, and I'm going on a, a classic rock station on a satellite radio, and I can sell nationally. <clears throat> it probably could be a very good buy, and I would think they're gonna have a website too, these places, and you could probably bundle it and again, the whole thing is tracking it. You know, what am I going to give them? What am I going to get them to get to start the conversation with them? You know, let them start talking to me. Could satellite radio do that? Sure. Hey, Al, we have a question online. Sure. Um, which is the best SEO integrated software package that you've found? Which would you well, recommend? Well, um, mine. <laughs> We have some stuff that's proprietary. So they can contact you and start yeah, a dialogue? We, well, we, yeah, they can certainly do that. That would be great. You know, there are so many different perspectives on SEO, on web marketing. Um, we've gone so far as to have people indicate to us websites are becoming obsolete. Um, social media is really the key as opposed to driving people to websites. Any opinion? Any, any feedback? Yeah. Um, I actually wrote a, a blog on this and uh, I said uh, follow the profits and not the pundits. So if you track it, the answer is yes. Some people make money on social media, some people make it on SEO, some people can make it on PPC. And my advice is don't worry about what your friends say or your business colleagues. And particularly, we're very, very sensitive to people we look up to in business. Oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, I had a guy, did the penny saver come up here? Okay. You know, and people were sort of, oh, you're in the penny saver. And he was making a ton of money off of it. And on the little listings in some of the contracting section, and I said, ignore that. When it stops working, stop do it. In the meantime, laugh with him all the way to the bank. So my advice would be, yes. Sometimes it's Facebook, sometimes it's SEO, sometimes it's P everything's different. Every, every puzzle is a little different. Every marketing puzzle is different. Track and do what's profitable. And if it's on the back of a uh, candy bar wrapper and that works, that's and what works. you should do. Andres, you want to use the microphone or? Want me to stand next to you? You can talk into my chest. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving. Oh, thank you. You know, you need a guitar like you. Yeah, it's great. Great presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Learned, learned a lot. Um, one question. Uh, do you think Google is rigging the game? Uh, I saw an article in the New York Times. Uh, about uh, people who advertise through them and then they're having to move uh, with them. Uh, are they rigging the game? 
I don't know. I'll tell you this much, they get to make rules and everybody else follows. For example, you know, um, a video which is turned into an article ranks a little bit higher than an article. And, you know, ha has, yeah, well you could say that, but you could also could be cynical and say they spent a billion dollars to buy YouTube. You know, a picture is a thousand words, however, it gets transferred to real words. So, will, you know, people say, are they going to get an antitrust suit? I don't know. But, I, you know, the reality is I can't change any of that. So what I got to do is try to figure out how do they, how they're changing the rules this week. What, what new rule did they make up this week? And, and if I remember this, content, relevant content, relevant content, relevant content. It still is, how authoritative am I? Am I looked at as just a sales organization or am I helping people? So if I remember about the content, um, I'm getting in the right ballpark and some of the little things that they change will change tomorrow and we'll have to go figure it out because they don't tell you. Al, we've had another question from uh, online and that concerns mobile SEO. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, it was, there was a report from Cisco that says that by 2014, over 90% of their traffic is going to be video traffic. And combining that with mobile and application tablet, smartphone-based SEO, how do we position for that? Well, it's coming. Um, a lot of people do not like to get ads and that kind of information on their phones. However, if I'm going by and I, I have something on my fold and I do a QR, you know, there's a QR code and I zip it and I find out there's a special at Joe's uh, Pub, great lunch, I'll be happy. So it's, am I giving them relevant information? Is it, is it integrating? Is it going to be here? Yeah. Is it going to be here to stay? I think so. And I think people will, um, peop the, the marketing side, we have to figure out how to give them information they actually want and not be a pest. You remember Crazy Eddie? Did they get those commercials up here? I will not he's be under sold. He's, he's still in jail. So. Yeah, he's still in jail, but yeah, what a fool. He had made so much money off those obnoxious commercials. But the clicker, right, the channel changer, and being able to record your, your um, cable changed all that. You don't see those ads anymore. So if you take that same premise and say, I gotta be funny, I gotta be entertainment, I gotta be something that they want to click on and they wanna read, that, those are the guys who are going to make a ton. And I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go, but it's, it's not going to go away. Right. Great job. Question? We've got another question. Good. I'm going to try and get out of the interference zone. <laughs> Watch out. Bring your guitar. We have a little more time. Sure, absolutely. We had Zappa. You could be Hendrix. Just light <laughs> your strings on fire. Um, one of the biggest ga game changers in our industry is uh, translations, typesetting, was um, the um, globalization. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, we were competing against the whole world, mm -hmm. uh, which was a, a mixed blessing, because on the one hand, uh, the whole world was our market. On the other hand, the whole world was competing against us. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, a, a big portion of our, our um, business is uh, localizing uh, uh, companies' literature and um, and websites. Um, uh, the the big question is always stand a little closer to the microphone. Oh, the big question is always uh, whether well we try to tell our companies, our customers to have uh, to create their website with. Uh, translating it into other languages mm -hmm. in mind. Mm -hmm. quick, quick, quick. If they yep. don't de that, do that, then we have to make this decision whether it should be a one bucket or a two bucket localization. What is your preference? Okay, so you're, you're talking about, for example, let's just use your site, translation okay. service. Yes, for example. I, I used to deal with a gentleman down in lower Manhattan who did a lot of work with the financial community as well as the ad agencies. And back in the day, he was a huge yellow page guy. And it worked like a charm, it was all over the country. Got cut back, cut back, cut back. Uh, then they went web. And what I think you're 
alluding to is the competition that will undercut you overseas, which is telling you, I, I have that all the time. I had a gentleman who uh, wanted me to do a brochure for him, and he had contacts in one of these Asian countries, and once we started, he said, well, first he loved the idea and the concept. He says, well, I'm not going to pay a nickel, but if you design the whole thing and write the copy, and I love it, I'll pay you everything. And I said, well, we signed a contract, we got to live by the contract, and quite honestly, I'm not interested, not that you would do this, sir, in doing your creative and your writing and having you ship it off to India or China and, and have it produced, and I'm sure you run into that. Yes. So it's a matter of producing value. I walked away from that. I chose to walk away from that because mm -hmm. I'm not going to work on spec and then have them play that game, um, especially since we had an agreement. <laughs> um, in your case, what value are we delivering locally? And then I'll get back to the SEO, local SEO. Um, <clears throat> the key is the value story, how we're delivering better value. Yes, you're more expensive. And in this economy, people often run to, to the money. But you have to talk value, 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 value. Will you win them all? No. But the ones that understand how you deliver value, you should. Client the, education, I would say. Yeah. Oh. And, and I, I go directly at it. I just say, here's what you can do. And if I give you this, they can steal the idea. Now have them get the next idea. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, how well can they do that? I don't know, because they're usually just slamming it through. Um, your next question was about which bucket you should put. Let's say you have a translation well, site. It, you, have a, you have a site already up. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you see that uh, maybe because of NAFTA or the, the, the Brazilian market that is, is, is emer not emerging, it has emerged already. Yes, it has. Um, and you want to create your website in, in um, Portuguese. And, uh, Portuguese or, or Spanish for Mexico, whatever. Do you prefer to create an individual language, separate language website for the Spanish or Portuguese, or do you, that's the, the two bucket, or do you prefer um, well, to rework, retool the, the website, original website, and just have a, uh, a button for the, the other language? Oh, in other words, you have a button and it just translates. No, I would no, 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 no machine translation. It doesn't. It takes you to another a Mexican site. So what's that the difference? Google would I, I can still optimize the pages on the Mexican site. Yes. And I can do well, I can do the American site. Let, let, let's just. Well, the, the I'm one in you know, Australia. Well, the it, British think that neither one of us really speak English, but. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you two meet off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay sorry. Uh, we have a question on the internet that neither Sarah or I understand. So. I may not either. Uh, how much do you develop modern marketing online betting from the traditional 4P? How, what, how much do I? How much do you develop modern marketing online bet C from the traditional 4P? We don't know what that means. Bet C from the traditional 4P. I, by the way, I don't know everything, but I'm not following that one. We don't know, uh, Carl, yeah. Yeah. what's his name? David, if you can re if just kind of... If he emails it to me I'll, I'll, you know, and just explains it, I'll be glad to do If you can best. reform your question a little bit, we'd be, we'd be happy to give it a go, or we'll be happy or to get you directly in con contact with Alan. You can ask And by the way, it, there are forms on acceleratedadvertising.com where you can shoot those questions, and I'll do my best Good. to answer them. Does anybody have any other questions? Mr. Deal, why don't you step up to the mic, introduce yourself. <laughs> Chair has his jacket. Bring the whole chair. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween just passed. We didn't tell you we had those special I also chair want to compliment you on uh, a great presentation. Very interesting. Uh, I find myself trying to get my mind around selling to another business. Uh, selling uh, service to a large company, medium company, or uh, 
wanting to make a proposition to a company to buy a company and uh, being able to target the right person in that case that's the corporate development vice president uh, or if I want to sell them technology it's the chief technology officer and uh, in that context and correct me and or just talk about it if you would uh, because I'll get something out of the, uh -huh. what you say I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm really depending on making a face-to-face -face contact with the right person in that organization myself right and I'd like to have my website uh, be something he goes to later and is impressed mm -hmm. and supported towards doing what I want him to do. Mm -hmm. What would I do? How would I approach that challenge? Right. Well, you know, Wes was talking about um, moving from traditional marketing to um, online marketing. Um, let's, let's do the macro, you know, the big picture would be your trade press, would be press releases, would be um, ads and things that influence those people, design engineer, whatever, you know, they're sometimes the hardest people to ever get to in an organization. Um, and, and they really do their best to hide their names for direct mail. But I would also incorporate a, a direct mail in there and, and a series of soft sells talking about their issues, their problems. Oh, by the way, we have a solution. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, I actually have a cool little card that we used to send out <clears throat> that says, uh, I've got a million dollar idea for you. And you'd open up and I'd put a million dollar bill in there and say, I'd love to talk to you. Or I'd have one where I'd make a cup of coffee and say, I got a great idea. How about a cup of joe or something like that? and be very creative, not being the same old, hey, mister, I want to sell you, I want to sell you, I want to sell you. Be different, be creative, be persistent. Be done. Be done. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we have spoken. That's about it. Um, thank you very much. I, I hope this was uh, an informative morning for everybody. Um, our next presentation is going to be December 4th, which is not going to be a webcast, so we're going to kind of bypass December and go right into January. We have an excellent speaker uh, for January who is going to be here in person all the way from Australia. And he's coming to address us and, and, and our audience, uh, as well as we have a session planned on, uh, on innovation in, in January, presented by Dr. Fortino. So we're looking forward to that. And um, we've got, we got a whole new series of things planned for, for 2013. And we thank you very much for joining us in studio. And thank you very much for joining us online. Have a very productive day. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>